for oral questions. I recognize the Leader of His Majesty's loyal opposition. Good morning, Speaker. Uh, our public colleges and universities are nearing uh, the breaking point after decades of underfunding, while for-profit career colleges have been seeing a massive expansion under this government. Yesterday, we got a hint about why uh, by, in a report that was uh, done by the Trillium. They found out that government members have raked in more than $151,000 in political donations from private college operators since 2018. One of the biggest beneficiaries, the local campaign of the Minister of Colleges and Universities herself. That's thousands of dollars in donations from the very same insiders who stand to benefit directly from her decisions as minister. So to the Premier, is it acceptable for the Minister of Colleges and Universities to take donations from people lobbying her office on behalf of private colleges? Members, please take their seats. Minister of Colleges and Universities. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. And let's talk about the international students and the chaos that the federal government has caused in the post-secondary sector across Canada. Order. Absolutely no consultation with the provinces or the institutions themselves. Mr. Speaker, I am hearing from ministers on this side about the impact that this is going to Order. have in their ministries. In fact, the Premier and the Prime Minister just signed a historic health care deal. Where do you think the PSWs and the nurses are going to come from that the Minister of Long-Term Care and the Minister of Health are going to need? Where are we going to find the skilled trade workers that the Minister of Labour and the Minister of Infrastructure are going to need to build the houses, the, the roads, the schools, the hospitals in this province? Mr. Order. Speaker, absolutely no consultations Response. with the provinces or the institutions themselves. Absolutely disgusting from the federal government. The supplementary question. Speaker, it, it, Speaker, it gets even sketchier. Most of the donations came from a single event hosted by the minister in March 2022. What? Nearly a third of the attendees were connected to these private corporate colleges, all paying a thousand bucks a pop, Speaker, for an audience with the minister. Private colleges have existed for years, but under this government, they have exploded, so much so that even the Auditor General flagged it. Speaker, is this really how things are going to be done in today's Ontario? Members, please take your seats. Minister of Colleges and Universities. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't know if the Leader of the Opposition has done anything to lobby for additional seats in this province, but we on this side have been working hard at that. In fact, I've met with the, labor, the tourism industry and the Minister of Labor, or sorry, Tourism, Culture and Sport. The number of workers that your minister needs alone. The, the look at March break coming up, the resorts, the front desks, the, the ski hills, the workers that we need in this province is absolutely incredible. And that's our disgusted with the federal government for dropping this on the provinces with no consultation. The Minister of Labour and I tried to meet with the Minister months ago and were not able to because they kept cancelling on us. We have been there working with our stakeholders, the colleges and universities, to ensure that we have a pathway forward as we deal with the disgrace that the federal government has dropped on us. Here, here. Final supplementary. It's pretty clear who can get it done under this government, anyone willing to fork over the cash. They started handing out licenses to private health care companies after receiving thousands of dollars in donations from clinic owners and investors looking to set up private hospitals. And now, here we are, we can connect the dots again. Order. Massive donations to the PC party, order. massive expansion of private for, for Essex, come to order. How can the Premier defend a return to the bad old days of Liberal cash for access order. culture where policies are decided by how much you're willing to hand over to the governing party? Stop the clock. So, I'm having difficulty hearing. The Leader of the Opposition asked her question, so I'd ask the House to come to order so that I can. Restart the clock to respond for the government, the Government House Leader. Yeah, listen, Mr. Speaker, I, uh, 
Uh, I sympathize with the Leader of the Opposition. Uh, she is correct that under the, uh, the previous uh, Liberal government, uh, uh, these types of, uh, of, uh, of programs became endemic, and we didn't see, of course, any results under the, with the previous Liberal government. Now, I remind the Leader of the Opposition that uh, she and her party supported uh, the Liberals uh, uh, throughout uh, that time when they actually held the balance of power. And what is so disappointing Order. by that, Mr. Speaker, is that during that time of support, we didn't see investments made in health care, transit, transportation. We didn't see uh, investments made to build new subways. Uh, Order. Mr. Speaker. In fact, they left us the most indebted uh, sub-sovereign go sub -sovereign government on the planet, Mr. Speaker. They left us the most over-regulated uh, jurisdiction in Canada. They scared away 300,000 jobs throughout all of that. The NDP supported them, Mr. Speaker. That's the legacy of the previous Liberal government. I'm glad the Leader of the Opposition finally recognizes the destructive nature of the previous Next question. Once again, the Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, even while they are under an RCMP criminal investigation, this government continues to dig into a cash for access culture and it gets so much worse. While communities across Ontario are doing absolutely everything they can to support people who are struggling with addiction, with recovery, with mental health issues. The Minister of Mental Health and Addictions is hosting a $1,000 a ticket fundraiser called, unbelievably, a mental health mixer. <laughs> My question is for the Premier. What exactly are attendees getting out of spending $1,000 to attend the Minister's mental health mixer? I'm going to caution the Lady of the Opposition on, on the choice of words that she's using in her questions, and um, Government House Leader will respond. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Look, the reality is that since we came to office, we have been pouring money into mental health and addictions. You know why, Mr. Speaker? Because under the previous Liberal government, supported by the NDP, like so many other sectors across the province of Ontario, mental health and addictions were completely ignored. They closed down beds, they laid off nurses, they didn't build hospitals, they did nothing. They did absolutely nothing, Mr. Speaker. There are so many people that have come to me, and I'm very passionate about this, Mr. Speaker. So many people that have come to me and have talked about the failings of the previous Liberal government, which have left their families, their children, without the ability to get care. And through it all, the NDP supported them. Now, the Liberals scream and holler over Order. there, right? But you failed the people of the province of Ontario. You failed children. You failed adults. You failed anybody who needed mental health and addiction support because you did nothing. Absolutely nothing. Ask the member for Hamilton Mountain to come to order and the member for Ottawa South to come to order. Start the clock. Supplementary question. Speaker, this government is putting a price tag on mental health. That's what they're doing. Wait lists for mental health services are out of control. It takes up to a year more sometimes for people to access treatment. Just last week, 17 people in Belleville experienced an overdose, uh, overdose in just one day. The mayor is absolutely begging his local Conservative MPP and the minister, anyone, to help. But instead, this government's priority is hosting a fundraising mixer with the minister? So out of touch, Speaker. So to the Premier again, I hope he answers this question. Why is this government and this minister playing a cash for access game with the mental health of Ontarians? Members will take their seats. The Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addictions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know, we answered this question yesterday, but I'm going to try to answer it again. One of the things we did, one of the first things we did, was speak to the mayor, speak to the first responders, speak to CMHA to find out what the immediate needs were. And we were there. We made those investments. 
We also went out to Belleville and had the opportunity to meet with all the first responders, with the mayor, and we discussed a plan that needs to be put in place. Now, I drove out to Belleville and I spent the time with the mayor and the other service providers. Where, where were you? Where was the, the, the NDP at that point in time? You were Order. busy making cat videos, I, I assume. <laughs> But let's just talk about the reality of what's happening in Belleville and everywhere else in the province. We are the first party that is making substantial investments Spots. in creating continuums of care in the communities, looking after everyone. And we're doing it in a culturally safe way, not just in southern Ontario, but Thank you. Let's go take a seat. The final supplementary. Speaker, that is, a, that is a very disappointing and I would say shameful response uh, to that question. Uh, Ontarians, I, I, I think the government needs to wake up. Ontarians have caught on to this government's backroom deals and their insider favours. There are communities all across this province who are waiting for an answer from this government about funding for critical services, and that minister is holding a mixer tonight, $1,000 a pop, to raise money for his own campaign coffers, while the mayor of Belleville is so desperate they're willing to go it alone? Is this how Order. people are supposed to finally get action on the mental health crisis facing their communities or the education crisis, the university students? I mean, my goodness. Question. My question to the Premier is, what's next? Our toddlers going to have to give up their toys for childcare spaces. Like, what is next? That's my question to the Premier. The Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addictions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, I cannot believe how out of touch the Leader of the Opposition is. We have spent time going back and forth, crisscrossing the province, speaking to service providers, community-based organizations that are in need of support and help. Where are you and where are the other people in your party? We are speaking with people, we're meeting with them, we're hosting roundtables, and we're making investments with real dollars, $525 million a year, an addiction and recovery fund of $90 million that opened 400 beds, 7,000 treatment spots. Where were you? I know where you Order. were, making CAD videos, sitting here critiquing what we're doing and not standing with us and actually making and supporting the decisions that this government is making, which are to Response. the benefit of the people of the province of Ontario. Remind, I'll remind the members to make their comments through the chair, not directly across the floor of the House. The next question, the member for Waterloo. Thank you very much. My question is to the Premier. In the Auditor General's re annual report released as last December, it was revealed that this Conservative government spent about $25 million on partisan ads. And I quote, the primary objective of these ads was to foster a positive impression Order. of the government, the report stated. $25 million spent on ads while Ontario experienced 203 emergency department closures, $25 million on ads while 2.3 million Ontarians did not have a family uh, physician, $25 million on ads while regions across northern Ontario declared a health state of emergency. This government, government added side. insults to injury by opting for a Super Bowl ad, the most expensive ad on television, Speaker. Will the Minister of Finance, will the Premier, please Question. tell the citizens of this great province exactly how much of their money was spent on these fictional Super Bowl ads? Stop the clock. So, again, I'm having difficulty hearing the member who has the floor du duly um, recognized to ask a question and ask the government side to allow me to do so. Start the clock. Premier can respond. Well, well Mr. Speaker, you know, I, I got a call this morning from someone that landed in LAX, and they said they got off the plane and all they saw is Ontario ads running all the way down the terminal. It's in Chicago. They're all over the U.S. 
You know why they're all over the U.S.? They're our number one trading partner, Mr. Speaker. And when governors and senators coming up to me when they come here and said, wow, what are you doing? You're eating our lunch. We created more jobs, manufacturing jobs, in all 50 states combined. Yeah. We saw an EV auto sector that both these parties, the Liberals and NDP, absolutely destroyed, chased the whole sector out of the province, $28 billion of investment, more to come this year, Mr. Speaker, $20 billion in tech, $3 billion in life Spons. sciences. That's the reason they basically chased 300,000 jobs out of the province, and there's 700,000 more people working today than there was five years ago. You need a lesson on marketing and sales. Again, ask the members to make their comments through the chair. Order. The supplementary question back to the member for Waterloo. This, this Premier needs a lesson on how to govern with integrity in the province of Ontario. That's what you need. Just one commercial. <laughs> Not just Order. one commercial from this government was aired Order. during the Super Bowl. There were several commercials, which he's bragging about. In Waterloo Region, I had a Stop the clock. I apologize to the member for Waterloo. The member for Carleton will come to order. The member for Sault Ste. Marie will come to order. The member for Kitchener Conestoga will come to order. We start the clock. Member for Waterloo, I apologize once again for that. The speaker, not just one commercial speaker, several money was flowing out of the Treasury Board from this place instead of people having access to doctors, to education. In Waterloo Region, I have a constituent who's been waiting six months for a mammogram. Mammograms save lives. Is that a priority of this Premier? No, it is not. There are almost 300,000 people Order. on a wait list for mammograms. These tests save lives lives. So I want to ask this, this Premier, who's bragging about commercials in the LAX airport, can he explain to Ontario why he's spending public money praising himself over the people of the province that you are elected to serve? Stop the clock. Stop the clock. The member for Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke will come to order. The member for Sault Ste. Marie will come to order. The member for Niagara West will come to order. We'll start the clock. The Premier can respond. Oh, we're, we're, Mr. Speaker, you know something? We have seen massive growth. We are now an economic powerhouse around North America. The world is talking about Ontario that they never talked about Ontario before. Mr. Speaker, we're investing $28 billion in transit. And one line, one sector alone, we're building $70 billion worth of transit across the province. We're investing $28 billion in highways and roads and, and bridges. We're building hospitals. We're building schools. This is a place to open up business. Everyone knows it in the U.S. Again, Mr. Speaker, we're eating their lunch. This is the place, if you want to do business, the world knows you come to Ontario. We have another $30 billion of investments coming to Ontario this year alone. Hundreds of thousands of people are going to collect a bigger paycheck, a better job because of what our government's doing. Thank God you guys are never going to be in government. One more time, I'll remind the members to make their comments through the chair. The member for Hamilton Mountain will come to order. The next question, the member for Scarborough Agent Court. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Associate Minister of Transportation. In my riding of Scarborough Agent Court, constituents have raised concerns over the steep transit cost. At a time when many individuals and families feel like they are struggling to get ahead, paying a double fare is another added expenses to their household budgets. Speaker, commuters who travel daily to make a living are looking to us to make a public transit more convenient and affordable. We must act now 
to lower transit costs. Speaker, can the Associate Minister please share what our government is doing to make transit more affordable across Ontario's fast-growing communities? Thank you. Thank you. The Associate Minister of Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much to the member from Scarborough Agent Court for that question. Speaker, our goal has been always to provide Ontarians with affordable, reliable, and convenient transportation across this great province, Mr. Speaker. That's why starting this coming Monday, February 26th, under the leadership of Premier Ford, we are introducing and eliminating one fare, Mr. Speaker, that will save $1,600 every year. Mr. Speaker, this program, One Fair Program, is fully funded by our provincial government, Mr. Speaker, and this program will boost the ridership to buy nearly 8 million new riders per year. That means elevating the gridlock and taking cars off the road, Mr. Speaker. Spons. We'll continue to put more money back into people's pocket, and that's exactly what we're doing. We'll get it right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the Associate Minister for his response. It is exciting news that our government is once again putting money back into the pockets of public transit riders. Speaker, Many of my constituents in a Scarborough Agent Court need to take the TTC and the GO train to work each day. Having more affordable transit options is essential to save commuters time and money. Our government must remain committed to delivering real, tangible relief for Ontarians. Speaker, can the minister please elaborate on how one fare will keep costs down for the hardworking people in my riding and across Ontario. Thank you. Great. To apply, the Associate Minister of Transportation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. With one fair program, Ontarians can use any form of uh, payment of method, for example, Presto card, debit card, credit card, and also Google Wallet uh, on mobile phones as well, Mr. Speaker. This program is coming across GTHA, starting from Durham region, York region, Mississauga, Brampton, Barrie, Hamilton, Burlington, Oakville, Mr. Speaker, right across GTHA, the one fare program is going to eliminate the double fare. When a transit rider tra going from one transit to another transit agency, moving from one city to another city, no more they have to pay this double fare, Mr. Speaker, and they're going to have an affordable payment as, as well as seamless transition between one transit to another transit agency, Mr. Speaker. And we want to make sure. Premier, we want to make sure Premier made it crystal clear. We want to stand for affordability. We will work with all the municipal boundaries, all the municipal leaders to make sure one fair goes beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question, the member for Kiwetna. Uh, speaker, the um, question is to the Premier. Um, Howard Mashaki of Sulakot is one of my constituents. His wife, uh, Jeannie, had a stroke uh, back in 2018, leaving her paralyzed and needing 24-hour care. Speaker, uh, he had presented to the pre-budget uh, committee in 2020, and the government promised to help him access home care. So I asked, I asked this government, what is Ontario doing for Jeannie and others in the north who have, haven't had been able to access proper home care support closer to home? To respond, the Parliamentary Assistant Administrator of Health, Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member opposite for the question. Our government has recognized that the status quo is not working and that more needs to be done, and that is why we launched our Your Health Plan. We're taking bold and innovative action to eliminate surgical backlogs, reduce wait times for publicly funded surgeries and procedures, uh, and that plan is working. We want to have a strong home and community care sector as a key part of our plan, and we want to make sure that these resources are available across the province, including in Northern Ontario. And that's why recently, as the minister Order. said yesterday, we've announced new interprofessional primary care teams in the north, including in Sault Ste. Marie and Timmins and others. So we're 
making sure that the care is there for the people who need it. The supplementary question. Um, thank you for the uh, the answer, but uh, Speaker, uh, it's not working in part of Ontario where I'm at. So St. Marie is 2,000 kilometres from where I am in Sulicoat. Howard has uh, spent the last five years trying to navigate a badly broken healthcare system, and things are just getting worse. His family can used to be ignored and abandoned by this broken system. Speaker, uh, this government made big promises in 2020, saying Jeannie would get the home care she needs to live in dignity, and nothing has changed. Will they ensure families in the north get, get the access to the home care they need, yes or no? Members will please take their seats. Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Our government has made a commitment to make sure that people get access to the care they need when and where they need it, and that is everywhere across the province, including the north. We're making sure we make those investments, and we've made a billion-dollar investment in the home care sector over three years, accelerated those investments so that $569 million was in the budget for 23-24, including $300 million to support wage increases to stabilize uh, personnel in the home and community care sector including immediate funding for support, uh, so to support community programs such as Meals on Wheels. And we passed legislation recently to further modernize the home care sector, integrating it with our Ontario health teams, Ontario health teams who are also being established in the north. Ontario is taking steps to have integrated care coordination, flexible care planning and delivery, and needs-based care. We're not focused Response. on hours of delivery. We're focused on patients, and we're going to make sure that they get the care they need in the north and across Ontario. Good job. Thank you. The next question, the member for Niagara West. Thank you very much, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Health. We saw the previous Liberal government here in Ontario stretch our hospitals to a breaking point in Niagara West and across the rest of this province. We saw that hallway health care, reckless mismanagement, out of control spending, and scandals define their management of our health care system. And since I was elected in 2016, I've been advocating on behalf of my constituents and all the people of Ontario for an improved health care system. I know that this Premier and this government are getting it done by prioritizing investments in our patients' care when and where they need it. And so my question to the Minister Speaker is what is this government doing to ensure that every person in the province of Ontario has access to primary care when and where they need it? Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Health and Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the exceptional member from Niagara West. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, our government has been making record investments in health care. We also recognized early that when it comes to your health, the status quo is not working. For over a decade, the NDP propped up the, uh, the Liberals as they cut medical residency positions, cut the number of physicians practicing in family health teams, and cut access to care, creating the longest health care wait times in Ontario's history. That's why one year ago our government introduced Your Health, a comprehensive plan to make bold, innovative and creative changes to strengthen all aspects of our health care system, making it easier and more convenient for Ontarians to connect to the care they need closer to home. And we're already starting to see results. We're moving on over 50 hospital developments, including Niagara. That will add over 3,000 new hospital beds to the 3,500 we have already added since 2020, adding more beds in four years than the Liberals added in 14 years. Oh. <clears throat> Supplementary question. Well, thank you, Speaker. And I think we can see in the parliamentary assistance response that the contrast behind the broken record of the Liberal government and our government taking advantage of the way that we can move forward in transformation for the people of Ontario couldn't be more stark. And it's encouraging to see that this government is making record investments to help people in my community and so many others. I was pleased to see that 11 primary care organizations in the Niagara region actually received funding as part of a historic announcement into our area. From Waynefleet to Port Colborne, from Fort Erie 
Surrey to Grimsby, Niagara is going to be getting the convenient care that the people in our region deserve. A $2.4 million investment will mean that an additional 7,600 constituents are going to be receiving primary care. We know that every person in Ontario should have access to well-connected care when and where they need it, and that is exactly what this minister is working on. So, could the minister please elaborate well, on what this that. government is doing to connect people in every corner of our province to the care they need? Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you, Speaker, and I want to thank the member from Agro West for his question again. Ontario currently leads the country with over 90 per cent of people connected to regular health care providers, and we have added hundreds of medical residency positions specifically for family doctors across the province. But we can do better to improve access for people in Ontario not connected to primary care. And that's why on February 1st, the minister announced an investment of $110 million to connect over 300,000 more people to primary care teams. This will add over 400 new primary care providers as part of 78 new and expanded interprofessional primary care teams. And these teams will help people currently without a family doctor connect to primary care. Together with Ontario Ontario's largest expansion of medical school spots while breaking down barriers for internationally trained doctors. Spots. Ministry of Health modeling shows that all of these initiatives together will connect up to 98% of people in Ontario to primary care in the next several years. We won't stop until we get it done. Thank you. The next question, the member for London North Centre. Good morning, Speaker. After six years of this Conservative government, the housing crisis has gone from a fire to a raging inferno. People are struggling, and yet Conservatives made new roadblocks for municipalities to access provincial housing funding. Conservatives even admitted that the government building affordable housing is like, and I quote, taking power away and would destroy the integrity of the free market. This legislature is full of words about housing and little action. Speaking of words, at a time when no one can afford housing, would the Premier please provide a definition for his term, attainable housing? You can do it. <clears throat> Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Well, I know the member must be grateful for the 21 per cent increase in uh, homelessness uh, funding in his riding, Mr. Speaker. Not something that he asked for, but something that was delivered by the Associate Minister of uh, Housing. Let's just get, let's get this straight. So the NDP sat here while the Liberals presided over obstacle after obstacle after obstacle in the way of building homes. The NDP have become so irrelevant in the discussion, really, haven't they? Because they supported a decade and a half of inaction by the Liberals. When it comes to building housing, people know that it is this government that's going to get the job done. That is why, since the housing supply action plans that we brought in place, we have seen housing starts at their highest level in decades. And, Speaker, get this. Purpose-built rentals at our, are at their highest ever in the province of Ontario. Now, ever. So unlike the Liberals who put obstacles in the way, we remove obstacles and we deliver for the people of the province of Ontario and will continue to do so. Supplementary question. Speaker, through you to the Government House Leader, I've been asking for emergency homelessness funding for my community of London since I was elected in 2018. Back to the Premier. Across the province, the Finance Committee heard from municipalities who are breaking under the burden of providing affordable and supportive housing, yet this government has spent 18 months trying to figure out what their own words meant. It's pretty embarrassing that this government uses slogans that literally mean nothing, literally mean nothing, even to themselves. It kind of reminds me of the kid who tries to give themselves a cool nick nickname, and nobody, and I mean nobody, actually uses that name. <laughs> when will this government stop using empty words and make good on their promise to make municipalities whole? Yeah. <laughs> Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Speaker, you know who is uh, very supportive of the work that we are doing uh, to build more homes, to get roadblocks out of the way? It's the Mayor of London, oh. who recently at a council meeting talked about how good the Associate Minister of Housing has been to help unlock housing in that community. Now, the reason, the reason, Speaker, you will know, 
The reason that London is in such a crisis is because for far too long, Liberal oh, and awful. NDP members of Parliament have been there. But of course, with the Associate Minister of Housing on the job, we have been able to deliver a 63 percent increase in the member's own riding when it comes to homelessness uh, uh, prevention. The member talks about definitions. Well, I'm not sure what he's talking about because he actually voted in favour of our definition not long ago in a bill that was presented in front of this House, the Affordable Definition of housing, which he and all members unanimously voted in favour of, Mr. Speaker. What they're worried about is that we're actually delivering for the people of the province of Ontario, Mr. Speaker. I say to the member, don't worry, despite your inability to get the job done, we will. Here, here, here. The next question, the member for Algoma, Manitoulin. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Last November, 25 hospital CEOs in Northern Ontario wrote a joint letter to your government about the precarious financial situation that they are in. In the letter, they outlined the fact that hospitals in Northern Ontario have been directed by your minister to avoid closures of emergency department, support surgical recovery, and to avoid reductions of hospital services. At the same time, they are expected to cope with the financial pressures of private agency staffing, the impacts of Bill 124, infrastructure costs, and inflation, as well as the discontinuation of the locum incentive program on March 31st. Despite these pressures being communicated to the ministry, Northern hospitals have received no funding to support their work, pushing many of our Northern hospitals to the brink of having to consider drastic measures to continue to operate. Question. Premier, why has your government ignored the requests of Northern hospitals and allowed them to reach this crisis point? Parliamentary Assistant, the Minister of Health, and member for Lake Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. For over a decade, the Liberals supported the NDP, the, sorry, the Liberals supported by the NDP underfunded the health care system, Order. closing hospitals and hospital beds, firing nurses, and cutting medical school residency spots. Our government inherited a health care system under pressure due to failed policies of the previous Liberal government. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, our government has made record investments in health care. Since 2018, we've increased the health care budget by over 18 billion dollars, investing $80 billion into the uh, system in this year alone, and the total health care budget in Ontario is the same as that of almost every other province and territory combined. Continuing their legacy of not supporting health care across the province, the Liberals and NDP Spons. constantly vote against our investments and bold, innovative action by this government. We've seen an increase in new nurses and new physicians registering and starting to practice, and we're going to make sure that we get it done for our hospitals across Ontario. The supplementary question. Again, to the Premier. When the letter came to my attention, followed by the Auditor General's scathing report on Northern Hospitals, I met with the leadership teams in each hospital in my writing. Northern Hospitals are approaching a crisis that will impact services and will mean emergency closures, services suspended, and potentially complete hospital closures. The situation is especially dire in small communities where they deal with more complex delivery of care work with fewer resources, and are often the end-all and be-all of health care for a very large area. Speaker, Northern hospitals are poised for catastrophe. This crisis is real, Premier. Premier, these hospitals raised this alarm months ago. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Member for Eglinton Lawrence. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. We continue to work with our hospital partners, including the Ontario Hospital Association, to ensure that all our hospitals have the tools they need to continue to deliver high-quality care that patients in Ontario deserve. And this includes communicating to the Ontario Hospital Association and hospital corporations throughout the province that our government would provide financial support to hospitals facing financial challenges. And that means that we have their backs. This includes a 4% increase to the hospital sector, an additional $44 million to tackle emergency department wait times, as well as a historic 
$330 million in annual funding for pediatric care in every corner of the province. We'll continue to support and work with our hospital partners who deliver convenient care to patients close to home. Response. Thank you. The next question, the member for Newmarket, Aurora. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Minister of Infrastructure. Oh, great Minister. The previous Liberal government left many water Bingo. infrastructure programs in Ontario underfunded <laughs> and poorly managed. Shame. Under their watch, much of the infrastructure was in need of critical repairs and upgrades. Shame. As our government continues to build Ontario, here, here. it is essential for our municipal partners to have the tools they need to build stronger, more prosperous communities. That's why we must invest in critical infrastructure to support our rapidly growing population, unlock more housing opportunities, and spur economic growth. Speaker, can the minister please share what our government is Question. doing to support municipal water projects to help build more housing? That's a good question. To reply, the Minister of Infrastructure. Thank you very much to the hardworking member, and you're right, we are building this province. Mr. Speaker, our ministry met with over 50 different rural municipal partners at the Roma Conference, and that is addition to past Roma meetings and AMO meetings and the consultations that occur in between. But what was very clear, Mr. Speaker, was the need for water infrastructure, the need for drinking water, wastewater, and storm water infrastructure. You cannot build housing without connecting them to the pipes that flow clean water, discharge dirty water, and treat that wastewater, Mr. Speaker. In the fall economic statement, we announced the $200 million Housing Enabling Water Systems Fund applications uh, the intake for applications opened at the end of January and we encourage all municipalities in the province of Ontario to apply a supplementary question thank you. and thank you to the minister for that response it is encouraging to see our government support municipal water projects to help build more housing and provide residents with clean reliable drinking water speaker Despite our numerous calls to the federal government, they have not yet provided Ontario its fair share of infrastructure funding. Shame. The people of this province are waiting. They are waiting for the federal government to step up and address unmet infrastructure needs. We must all continue to build a stronger Ontario together through a responsible, targeted approach. Speaker. Can the minister please explain how our government is bridging the gap in housing and water projects while holding our federal counterparts accountable? Mr. of Infrastructure. Again, thank you to the member. Two years ago, we knew that the Investing in Canada infrastructure program, program that was very successful and benefited many communities represented by members here in the House, we knew that all of the dollars would be allocated. For the last two years, we have been advocating and working and starting that conversation with the federal government to encourage them to give money to support Ontario infrastructure projects. Even the big city mayors, as well as AMO, wrote letters of support, stood behind us, and lobbied the federal government. Unfortunately, we saw nothing in their fall economic statement. We've seen nothing in their budget. But to the communities across the province, do not feel discouraged. We just released $200 million. Don't there is an intake process. Please apply. And the province is here to support you, to support you in growing your communities and enabling housing across the province of Ontario. Thank you. The next question, the member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Speaker, when it comes to my community in Niagara, the Premier and his Minister of Health promised over a year ago to provide a nurse practitioner to the town of Niagara and Lake. The town desperately needs a nurse practitioner, and the Premier has failed to act. Speaker, when will the Premier ensure that the people of Niagara and Lake get the public nurse practitioner service they need and deserve. To respond, the Premier. So disappointed with the member as he 
voted against a brand new hospital over a billion dollar hospital right in his own region but mr speaker what i was happy with him he handed out my cell number to everyone so i got to actually tell him the truth about you i actually told him the truth that you voted against doctors voted against nurses voted against the hospitals and you know something after i was finished talking to endless people not a little bit mr speaker I must be over 100 people I spoke to in his own writing. They agreed. But you know, it's very, very difficult, and we're doing everything we can because we've registered over 10,000 doctors, is having doctors in that area to make sure that they're taken care of when 80% of the people see the physicians in between 10 in the morning till 8 Response. at night. We need more doctors in the area. We're working very, very hard to attract doctors, attract the nurses that were paying for their education. Yeah, yeah. And during that time, from 10 at night till 6 in the morning or 8 in the morning, they see about eight patients. We're putting billions of dollars. Premier Will, please take his seat. And I'll remind the members to make their comments through the chair. The supplementary question. The question's back to the Premier, and you might be a stranger to the truth. Why won't the health minister... Ask the member to withdraw the unparliamentary remarks. Withdraw. I can't hold this up, but this is a headline in the Niagara Lake local paper. Not by me, Premier, but by the local written by Penny Coles. Why won't the health minister keep her promise to Niagara Lake? So it's not me. Speaker, back to the Premier. Niagara. In Order. Niagara, we have families in Order. desperate need of primary care doctor. A recent report by the Auditor General revealed that the Premier is underfunding public health care by $21 billion while increasing funding to for, for profit hospitals and clinics by 300%. We have an urgent care centre in Fort Erie, and why I gave your cell number out, closed to residents overnight, and still no nurse practitioner in Niagara Lake. We have emergency rooms closing and Question. urgent cares closing last year in record numbers. Speaker, when will the Premier drop the privatization scheme, invest in publicly funded, publicly delivered nurse practitioners for every resident in Ontario? Thank you. Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm, I think he has the numbers mixed up. We've increased spending in the province by $21 billion. Not, not cut it by $21 billion. And we've registered over 80,000 nurses, 10,400 doctors. We're building medical schools. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I'd like to ask him why he have vo voted against a brand new hospital in your area, a billion dollar hospital in the area. But I'd also like to ask him, maybe he can go out and help us. Maybe you could recruit some doctors and nurses to work in that urgent care facility. Because right now it's very, very difficult to find them. It's not a money issue, uh, Mr. Speaker. We need doctors across the province. And if the nurses, like I said earlier, you know, they work in rural areas, we'll pay. Here, here. We will pay for their education. That's why there were 17,500 nurses Spots. registered last year alone. Rather than complain, why don't you get off your lazy butt and start working? Order. Order. The next question, the member for Kitchener Centre. Mr. Speaker, my question is for the Premier. Tenants in a Kitchener apartment building are fearing the worst because they're handed an eviction notices. They're worried that their landlord is trying to evict them to raise their rents. They're seniors, newcomers, folks on ODSP, single parents, people who can't afford for their rents to go up. They have no place to go. The Ontario Landlord and Tenant Board has been failing to prevent bad faith evictions, so much so that the Ombudsman's report called the board fundamentally failing. Speaker, will the Premier help these folks by saying yes to real eviction prevention for renters by implementing vacancy control to limit huge rent increases between tenancies and stop these bad, bad faith evictions plaguing our communities? To apply, the Attorney General. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm honoured to take the first question from, from the new member, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. 
Now, just, just to give it a bit of background for, for the new member, Mr. Speaker, in, in the year 2014 to 15, the annual report of the Landlord Tenant Board, 2015 16, 2016 17, 27. 2018, they were taking in more cases than they were disposing of, Mr. Speaker. They were creating a backlog. And this, when we came into COVID, all of a sudden, Mr. Speaker, the system actually failed because they hadn't maintained the system. They, I'm talking about, is the Liberal Party, Mr. Yes. Speaker. The Liberal Party. And when the NDP held the balance of power, when they held the balance of power, they did nothing, nothing to identify these as issues, Mr. Speaker. We're going to get it done, Mr. Speaker. We've Order. covered the number of adjudicators. The we put a new system Order. in place, Mr. Speaker. We've added more Response. staff. We're, we're making things work, Mr. Speaker. We're going to get to balance, Mr. Speaker, despite the pile People of Kitchener mess that the Liberals the left us, Mr. Liberals. Speaker. <laughs> the supplementary question, back to the member for Kitchener Centre. Mr. Speaker, does the Premier know how many landlords have been fined over the past four years? Thirteen. Of those, four have paid fines of an average of $5,000. That's unacceptable. The government's failures are only driving up the cost of housing. Right now, the average rent for a one-bedroom apartment is $2,200. How is a person on a full-time minimum wage a month supposed to pay that much? That's all their money. How can single parents, retirees, folks on ODSP survive? Speakers, my uh, constituents cannot afford to wait. Again, will the Premier commit to real protections for renters, implement vacancy control now, and limit the huge increases between tenancies and de-incentivize these bad faith evictions plaguing our communities? The Attorney General. Mr. Speaker, we, we've increased the fines for uh, for landlords that are inappropriately evicting people, Mr. Speaker. The, the, the important thing, Mr. Speaker, is that they get a fair hearing. That they get a fair hearing, Mr. Speaker. That's why we've doubled the number of adjudicators. We put in a system that is more transparent, and it's moving faster, Mr. Speaker. We're at a point now where 90% of the orders are being issued 30 days or less. 90 per cent, 30 days or less, Mr. Speaker. We're coming back to balance. We're going to make sure that those tenants have a fair chance at a fair hearing so that they can get their matters resolved. And if, they, if the landlords are being inappropriate, if they're doing things they shouldn't be doing, then they will be. But let, let me remind you, Mr. Speaker, that as the Minister of Municipal Affairs indicated, we have the highest number of purpose-built rentals in the history of this province, Mr. Speaker. That's what tenants need. Thank you. The next question, the member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Speaker. Before I ask my question, I just want to wish a happy birthday to my good friend from Mississauga Centre. Hey, hey. My question is for the Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks. Oh, great minister. Our government must remain committed to the protection of green spaces. By expanding the amount of conserved natural spaces across the province, we're not only helping to preserve the environment, but to promote physical activity and improve mental health. And we need to continue our work with Ontario's conservation partners because these are our shared goals. Last week, I was honoured to join the minister and my colleague from Halliburton Corth Lakes, Brock, for an important announcement in Trent Lakes. Speaker, can the minister share with the House how our government is protecting ecologically important natural areas in my community and all across Ontario? That's a great question. Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks. Thank you, Minister. Uh, thank you, Speaker. And I want to thank the member for that uh, great question, and I want to thank him for being a special advisor to Parks. Because you know, while this government's building roads, bridges, and housing for people, we're also building great parks and preserving great green uh, spaces. And it's under the leadership of Premier Ford that our government is taking action to conserve Ontario's natural beauty and protect its unique biodiversity for future generations. Last Monday, I had the pleasure to announce the latest investment our government has made under the Greenlands Conservation Trust. $2.9 million to protect 1,400 acres of wetland fields and natural shoreline along Pigeon Lake. Speaker, this was one of the largest non-for-profit conservation projects in Kawartha ever, and the largest conservation project by the Kawartha Land Trust by working Response. together, Speaker, this project proves that we can not only protect our great land and conservation, but we can build the great things that we're doing in this province. And the supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for her response. 
Last week's announcement demonstrates our commitment to preserving our ecosystems across all of Peterborough Kawartha. Speaker, Ontarians want to see our government take meaningful action to ensure a healthy environment for everyone to enjoy here, here. now and into the future. We know that conserving natural areas such as wetlands, grasslands and forests help mitigate the effects of climate change. That's why we must continue our efforts and work in partnership with conservation leaders like Kawartha Land Trust to increase our opportunities to protect nature. Through you, Speaker, can the Minister please tell the House how investments in the Greenlands Conservation Partnership has enabled the government to lead the way in our conservation efforts? Very good. Very good. To the Environment, Conservation and Parks. Thank you, Speaker. And this is a great, great partnership we have with uh, with private donors and folks all across the province to really continue to lead the way in conservation as the province. And, Speaker, since 2020, our government has protected over 420,000 acres of land, an area two and a half times the footprint of the City of Toronto. Through the Greenlands Conservation Partnership, this is real progress in conserving Ontario's biodiversity. And since the launch of the program in 2020, we have had remarkable success. These successes include Hastings Wildlife Junction, Batchawada Island, and most recently, wetlands in Manitoulin Island. And thanks to our hard work, these lands are now permanently protected. But our work is far from done. Our government, under the leadership of Premier Ford, will continue to invest in conservation projects, Ontario's rich biodiversity, and build Ontario's climate resiliency for generations to come, all while building the critical infrastructure like roads, bridges, and Response. Thank you. The next question, the member for Humber River, Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. My question is for the Premier. Speaker, nobody asked for it, but this government is closing down Service Ontario locations and putting them into Staples and Walmart. Even worse, they're paying these American mega corporations over $1.7 million to do so in the form of makeover renovations. Now, this government will pay for the renos in Walmart or Staples, but not in existing service Ontario locations owned by small Ontario business owners. So why the double standard? Why does this government always put the interests of big U.S. companies over small, homegrown Ontario businesses? Minister of Government and Business Service Delivery. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, the member uh, for uh, Humber River Black Creek. More for less. The customer comes first, the people of Ontario come first. And so we reached out, my ministry officials reached out with the opportunity of the expiring locations in nine venues in the province of Ontario to look at further alternative delivery models. You know, every party at Queen's Order. Park. Every party that's ever formed government here at Queen's Park has embraced the alternative service delivery model of the private sector. And the retail partnership model, which is now added to with Staples Canada, which extends hours to 9 p.m. on weeknights, all day Saturdays as well, that's what people are embracing. Was a success with Canadian Tire IDA and Spons. Hardware. We're continuing that. And in fact, the member opposite's party supported the Liberal government on that retail partnership initiative in 2011. The supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. The minister told us he's paying Staples and Walmart to run Service Ontario to save costs, but he can't give us a solid amount and keeps changing the answer. And the minister refuses to give an answer as to why he's giving out sole-sourced contracts to big U.S. companies. So. Will this government come clean with the numbers? How much is it going to cost Ontario taxpayers to run Service Ontario out of Staples and Walmart, and why the secret sole source process? Mr. Public and Business Service Delivery. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and the member opposite. The answer is more for less. The, va the answer is value for money. The answer is a million dollars in savings over three years Order. in this pilot project. That's great news for the people of Ontario. And for a million dollars in savings, the people of Ontario in these nine locations will get extended hours, more parking, online booking, interacting with government in 15 minutes or less, and of course, all day Saturdays. And every one of the employees at the expiring locations are eligible to be employed at the new Staples Canada locations. That's great news for Ontarians. That's great news for service delivery. That's the name of my ministry, public and business service delivery. Thank you very much. Thank you to the member, Minister for Public and Business Service Delivery. 
The next question, the member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Solicitor General. People in my riding of Brampton West are concerned about ongoing car thefts in their communities. They, like many Ontarians, rely on their cars for their commute to work and to drive their family members to school and extracurriculars. With the reports of violent carjackings becoming more prevalent across the country, people in our province are justifiably concerned. They want to see our government combat the rise in auto theft in Ontario so they can feel safe in their own communities. Speaker, can the Solicitor General share with the House what our government strategy is to deal with this new wave of auto theft? Order. To reply, the Solicitor General. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank my friend for the question. Auto theft in Ontario is a serious issue. Car thieves have no morals and no decencies, and they don't share the values of who we are as Ontarians. And this government will not tolerate this crime. We are of a firm belief that these criminals belong in one place. They belong in jail. We will lock them up and we will throw away the key. Yeah, yeah. But Mr. Speaker, our government is taking this very seriously by investing over $160 million. We're investing $51 million in the auto theft grant, monies that are flowing to the First Nations, Municipal and the OPP Police Service. Mr. Speaker, we're investing over $100 million in bail compliance to keep these violent and repeat offenders off our streets. And Mr. Speaker, we're putting over 800 new police officers on the ground Response. by making it easier to get to the Ontario Police College. For our government, public safety is a priority morning, noon and night. Yeah. A supplementary question. Back to the member for Brampton West. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's encouraging to hear the Solicitor General talk about the actions our government has taken to combat auto theft and ensure violent offenders remain behind bars. Speaker, we have seen media reports of Ontario vehicles being smuggled overseas. This has left many people in our province troubled about the safety and security for themselves and their loved ones. But, Speaker, this issue extends across Canada. Our government, government must collaborate with other provinces and the federal government to put a stop to this criminal activity. Speaker, can the Solicitor General tell the House what our government is doing to advocate for the people of Ontario and to make sure that our borders are protected? Well said. And to reply, the Solicitor General. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And the member is absolutely correct. Just a couple of weeks ago, together with the member from Simcoe Gray, we attended the Auto Theft Summit in Ottawa. And we had excellent discussions with our federal counterparts. And I appreciate, as a result of sending a very strong letter to the federal government, we need them to step up at the Port of Montreal. And we need them to instruct CBSA to take the same protocols as they are for incoming sea containers. The same should be done for outgoing sea containers. Because, Mr. Speaker, that's where our autos are going. I had very detailed and excellent meetings with my, with my provincial counterpart in the province of Quebec, and they agree that more has to be done. Mr. Speaker, at the end of the day, we have one message for those who think it's okay to steal cars in our province or anywhere in Canada. We're putting you on notice. We're putting you out of business. Right. That concludes our question period for this morning. A number of members have points of order they wish to raise. I'll start with the Government House Leader, Understanding Order 59. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Speaker. I am uh, pleased to rise on Standing Order 59, uh, as I do every week uh, when the House is sitting uh, to outline the order of business. I will speak slower for the Liberal Caucus, who have uh, uh, raised the concern that uh, they are unable to keep up with, uh, with uh, my recitation of the weekly business. So on Monday, February 26, uh, we will be introducing a bill later today, and we will be debating that on Monday, February 26 in the afternoon. February 27th, in the morning and in the afternoon, we will continue debate on that bill. Uh, that evening, on February 27, there will be no private members' public business, uh, so colleagues can organize themselves accordingly. On Wednesday, February 28th, 
Uh, we will be debating a bill which will be introduced later today. In the afternoon, we will be debating Bill 162, uh, the Get It Done Act. Uh, it's uh, private member's business. Uh, we will move to uh, debate on the member for Guelph, Bill 156. Uh, on Thursday morning, Bill 162 again will be featured for debate, which is the Get It Done Act. There will be in the afternoon routine a ministerial statement on Black History Month uh, and proceedings for the afternoon on February, 29, uh, February uh, 29th are yet to be uh, determined. At 6 p.m., the member for Toronto Centre will have Bill uh, 42. Uh, Mr. Speaker, that's the order of business. I thank colleagues for a very good week. Thank you. I'll recognize the member for St. Catharines on a point of order. Thank you, Speaker. Although this is not really a par parliamentary point of order, but I think it's worth make, pointing out that today is my husband's, my best friend's, the First Lady of St. Catharines' 61st birthday, so I'd like to wish you, Jimmy, a very happy birthday and all your wishes to come true. Thank you. Point of order, the member for Ottawa South. Thank you very uh, much, Mr. Speaker. And I would like to thank my OLIP intern, Milena Bassiana, who it's her last day today. I hope she's up there somewhere. I can't see her. Um, she's probably hard at work for those last few hours. So she was calm in an office that's sometimes a little bumpy, as you can imagine, Premier. And, um, and I know that some lucky member on the other side is going to get her. So thank you very much, Milena. Oh, are you up there? Why are you supposed to be over here? And I would also, Speaker, speak, Speaker, I would also just like to take a moment to let the government house leader know that I'm always able to hear him. Thank you. Pursuant to Standing Order 36. Oh, sorry. Member for Guelph, I. Thank you, Speaker. I also want to take a moment just to thank uh, my OLIP intern, Evan Cameron, who's watching on, on video and say that whoever's office he will be in next, you're going to have a fantastic OLIP intern. Thank you for his great work, Evan. Got him well trained. Order. Mr. Speaker, I would also like to take this opportunity to thank my amazing OLIP intern, Caitlin Gallant. She's been remarkable, and some lucky individual uh, will, get, uh, will get her, and I'm so grateful. Thank you. <laughs> Pursuant to Standing Order 36A, the member for London North Centre has given notice of their dissatisfaction with the answer to their question given by the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing regarding attainable housing definition. This matter will be debated on Tuesday following private members' public business. Pursuant to Standing Order 36A, the member for Waterloo has given notice of their dissatisfaction with the answer to their question given by the Premier regarding Super Bowl commercials. This matter will be debated on Tuesday following private members' public business. Next, we have a deferred vote on private members' notice of motion number 75. Call in the members. This is a five-minute bell.